Welcome to the Career Spy Gen Podcast, episode 238. Today on the podcast, Jen and her guest, Sidar Oak, explore the pros and cons of becoming an independent consultant. Consulting. If you're not part of the solution, there's good money to be made in prolonging the problem. You're listening to the Careers by Jen podcast. I'm your host, Jen Swanson. This is the podcast that helps you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. Careers by Jen is a listener-sponsored podcast, and if you like the content, please consider supporting the show as a patron. You can do so for as little as $1 a month. Head over to careersbyjen.com and click on support to learn more. Hi, friends. Welcome to episode 238 of the podcast. Have you ever wondered about going it alone, about working for yourself instead of working for someone else, for somebody else's company or organization? Well, today's guest did just that. And if you've ever wondered about it, if you have ever had that thought and, uh, and wondered what would it be like and what would happen, then you'll want to listen to what Sidar Oak has to say. Sidar comes to us today from Belgium, and the connection is a little bit noisy at the start, so please bear with that. We, we attempted to fix it. I think we got it fixed partway through. It's not terrible, but you might notice a little bit of noise. Um, Sidar is a longtime listener to the Careers by Jen podcast, and he is an independent consultant and an executive coach in the tech sector. He helps people get started and helps them to grow their independent portfolios. I hope you enjoy our conversation. So Sidar Oak, what is the top motivator for people who make the leap from being an employee to being an independent consultant? The, there are uh, many motivators indeed, but the top one uh, is the one that's obvious actually, it's the compensation. So for me, that was not the top uh, motivator, but it is very compelling to, of course, earn three to 10 times more than what uh, an employee at your same level earns. Yeah, that makes it quite compelling for everybody, right? Yeah, so, so, but is that always the case that someone who goes from being employed, you know, with all the benefits and the stability of working for somebody else, um, is it always the case that they end up making more money, uh, uh, especially at the beginning? Uh, Well, sure, there are some cases and some uh, professions where uh, the being an independent Dependent is a little bit exploited. Like uh, technically, Uber drivers are also independents, right? Uh, in the UK, they are under zero-hour contracts and harsh working conditions. But when we are talking about the white-colored working, it is nearly like I have a research in front of me now. It's nearly ninety-five percent, ninety-six percent of the time that as an independent, you are paid more. So the um, compensation increases, of course, you have some other uh, expenses that you have to take care of. Uh, Something that your company used to do for you uh, has to be done by you. Now you have more paperwork. There are some like seemingly more red tape in it. But I am um, an independent consultant and I have uh, coached dozens of independent consultants or dozens of employees to become independent consultants during the years. And it were, has worked out great for me for multitude of reasons. So in the beginning, indeed, compensation can be a little bit lower, but it is still going to be much higher than, your, um, than what you would initially charge. For instance, uh, I, I can talk about the solid numbers even. like. The I, two days ago, I wrote a blog post on my blog on iCoach, and uh, like I was talking about the fireside chat I have done with uh, my uh, roommate by then, and he was an employed software consultant. Like he was, uh, so he was an independent software comp- consultant, and I was employed at the time, and I was getting fifty-five k per year. This is in Ireland, by the way. 
And I was thinking, because I knew nothing about this, the independence and why companies would ever hire independents, I was asking stupid questions. Like I was thinking that like he would was working in the company because he well, would not be accepted in the company as a as a normal employee, and that's why he is working as a contractor, right? I was thinking that like that was a, like a lowly position or whatever because I knew nothing about it. But then we were talking, and he was saying that I, like I was asking him, okay, how much do you earn? And he was like, uh, yeah, 500, 500 euros. And I was like, wow, that's low. low. How do you survive with about 500 euros a month? And he said, well, 500 euros a day. Oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> and that, that, that blew my mind when I'm paid like this. And I was thinking that I, I'm better than him, actually. <laughs> I do a better job than him, but I'm paid 55,000 euros. And uh, if you make the math for 10 months, for 20 days, um, and 500 euros, by the way, is a is a pretty pretty basic compensation for a software developer. Uh, in Ireland, they tend to go even for a senior developer 700, 800 is is just a norm. In Belgium as well, like 800, 900 euros for some uh, specs, like for project managers, can go up to thousand. Uh, yeah, so that's immediately is like from whatever you are doing without changing or acquiring any skills with your existing skill sets you can immediately nearly double most of time and if you deduct the expenses etc then uh, you will still net a good 1.8 1.7 times uh, of your earning even in the beginning that is so the the compensation in the end, uh, is indeed uh, in the beginning it is a little bit less, but it is still much more than an employee's compensation, because naturally you have to also pay some of your expenses, right? And uh, it has to be a little bit more advantageous than the employee position, so that the companies can. Uh, hire you fast and fire you fast. So that's the advantages and disadvantages, right? So it's important to understand for an independent consultant why the companies are hiring uh, independent consultants uh, and perfect our skills based on uh, what those uh, motivations are. Like, uh, you know, it's not always about cost savings, et cetera. Like if you are gonna pay double, like why would you pay double? I mean, I was that was the second question that I have asked uh, my friend. I was like, if uh, they can pay a guy like me fifty five thousand, why would they pay somebody like you one hundred and twenty thousand per year? I mean, and you seem to have also quite like a job security. They extend your contract contract every six months or whatsoever. So, what makes them pay that? And he lectured me that night about like what is the, re the real reason that the companies are uh, hiring independent consultants, and that made me become an independent consultant. That changed my whole uh, professional life. So, now, Sadar, you're you're in in the tech industry, right? So, is this true for other people who are not working in the tech industry? Um, who are, are consulting maybe on project management or some other kinds of consulting, reorganization of, of a company or something like that. Is it, is it also, does that also hold true? Yeah, indeed. Actually, uh, like the term contractor really comes from uh, normally the construction sector. You know, you have your subcontractors and even long before technology sectors existed, so they have just picked the jargon from there as they have done a lot of, uh, uh, the, they have stolen a lot of jargons from the construction sector. So in the construction sector, you have a lot of independent consultants, independent uh, project managers. And uh, in every sector that you can think of a, an advisory role, a consultant role, or an interim expert role, you can become an independent consultant. So it is a, it's a great way actually to identify if uh, the sector works or not. I have like three steps. 
to do so. First, if like if I would like to explore if my job has that or not, I would first, of course, go and try to find uh, this, a similar job on the internet. But second, I would also look like if in the industry people are hiring or people are searching for, or for example, sometimes uh, we are working in strategy teams and uh, the strategy consultants are outsourced. That's a good signal that the companies could also work with the independents. And uh, it's by far not restricted to tech, although tech is a little bit more liberal than uh, some others, it's easier to find some jobs in construction. It works well in uh, in automotive sector, in management consultancy. It is like the epitome of it. Like there are tons of uh, independent management consultants, and uh, yeah, and yeah. So there are uh, the the more sophisticated and uh, more in there are more intricacies or expertise a job has, the chances that becoming an independent consultant uh, is a transformative action that will increase as well so you talked about um other motivators we we are talking about compensation what are some of the other motivators that would um that would cause a person to want to become an independent employee uh yeah, my favorite one, my the one that made me an independent consultant is what's in the name actually is an in, becoming an independent person. Like I'm an independent entity entity. I am I'm seen as an expert. I am able to go between the companies and I am valued by my opinion uh, that is dissected from multiple companies like imagine as an employee if um, you change jobs every year you are seen as a job hopper right, right. It's, it's not a good thing on your seat as an independent it's an asset it's a great thing that you have seen 10 companies within the course of 10 years because you know the industry very well you know you have the expertise and you can talk about the best practices what to do and what not to do and even though you have spent the, the same amount of years with an employee, you are seen as a more senior person. Your your opinions are much more appreciated. So that's a for me that's a great advantage. You don't have to do a lot, a lot, a lot more work to get your work noticed uh, within the organization. Uh, and that's one of the key problems that in today's white collar. Um, scene we are facing right like how do i get my work recognized by my peers by my by my bosses by my uh, by my the people that i'm uh, leading so to make it visible uh, you have to have a greater sphere of influence it's like like uh, i was working in uh, the with the, on a project with the belgian government and i, I was talking directly to the CIO and they had a lot of employees over there that were really very qualified and uh, they could become uh, like high, higher than my positions etc but the thing that made the difference for me is that the government wanted to change the government didn't want to stay as they are so they wanted to look at how private sector is doing things and take the good parts of it right so that was putting me in a very effortless expert position and in a comfortable contract for the years to come so to me independence and not uh, being uh, liable to some employee employer relationship was the top motivator for me to uh, become an independent consultant uh, Another one that I, I really enjoy after becoming an independent is becoming, uh, I, I really detested the times that I had to ask for, a, for an obvious training that would make my skills better, or I had to take some days off from my own time because my manager wouldn't uh, approve a training, or I have to pay from my own pocket for it for a training. So I have to take like 10 approvals down the chain. 
And when you're an independent consultant, you pay for your own destiny. And and that's just great. I mean, you I, every year I set up a training budget for myself and I just go and buy the courses or attend the courses and certifications that I think is going to be useful for the rest of my career. And I don't have to get any permission from anybody. I can take a day off. Uh, I don't have to show any excuses. I don't have to... Um, uh, tell anybody any any lies etc it's just me i get myself uh, ready for the market and i invest in myself i take the decision and i do it and that's to me one of the very very uh, important parts after the com compensation and uh, being more independent Huh. So that's 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 a very good point because if you've been an employee, uh, as many of us have been, it's hard sometimes to get the time off that you want, whether it's for training or for uh, vacation or time with your family or, or what have you. Sometimes you have to ask and you have to wait and you have to take your turn. And that can yeah. be a challenge if you've got plans and you're really hoping to take a particular course that starts on a certain day mm -hmm. and it can be very, very frustrating. So that's, that's a big pro to yeah, working and for yourself. Of course, of course uh, I'm not saying that if you are in the middle of a project, you just uh, get off and leave without any notice or so. No, but no. The, cl the clients understand that you are an independent and you, you have the right to do that to give your services a couple of times. Like, for example, it is easier to negotiate uh, three days contracts or four days contracts than negotiating a part-time work or a flexible work with an employer, right? Because right. you are paid less automatically, uh, but you can just choose whatever suits your lifestyle. And that's indeed a very, very powerful life. And so what are some of the cons? Because we've talked about um, the compensation and we've talked about um, being able to, um, to do what you want as far as your time off goes in many cases or, or have more control over it at least. Um, but what about, what about some of the negative aspects of working for yourself? Uh, yeah, well, of course, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. I mean, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the, I'm I'm a strong proponent of it, and I also earn a, a good living out of uh, coaching people. Uh, so I can be a little bit biased, but of course, uh, like I'm not stupid as well. And uh, there are some, uh, yeah, there are some uh, downsides to it. Uh, to me like per this is a personal one i will start with the personal one this time like the paperwork and administration is daunting i really i <laughs> uh, i hate it like i hated it all my life and when i became an independent the number of papers that i have to deal with just like quadrupled out of nowhere huh like, I didn't notice how much my employer was doing for me in terms of papers. And these are not like complicated, uh, like because you, after a while, you are uh, just outsourcing some of those work, right? You have the, you have a lawyer, you have an accountant, it, something is automated, but there are things that just can't be automated. I'm paying your tax. Somebody has to log in into your bank account and pay them. Uh, or paying fines, etc. If you receive, it is uh, all the expenses that you have to do and pay and follow up and file them. The expense tracking systems that you have uh, it should be under your maintenance. Your uh, your independence mean your means your tools, your way of working, like you, your computer or whatsoever. Because even if you violate any of them, the uh, IRS of your com country. I don't know uh, what it is in Canada. Maybe? It's Canada Revenue. <laughs> revenue Services. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Revenue Services might come after you and just say that, well, uh, you are not, you are saying that you are an independent consultant, but you are not actually, you are fooling us. And they might have a point. So 
those things need to be watched out a little bit more carefully. There are some information to be learned. There is a lot of research to be done. And at times it might get harder. Yeah? You might go through a rough patch of three months, six months of not being able to find a new contract. And that might be a psychological uh, setback for the first time. Because after a while, when you are an in experienced independent consultant, you get used to the rhythm and you, you, you get to know it. You make a pile of uh, cash to, for the rainy days. Uh, you, make your, you manage your cash flow better. You learn how to do stuff. But in the beginning, it might be difficult to end the relationship with a client, to reject some clients, and and these are yeah in the beginning these are tough uh, so there are some uh, disadvantages also for instance uh, the uh, in in terms of motivation and coaching in the beginning of your uh, free freelancer let's say career it is it's because the moment that you left the building of your employer they are not responsible of your career anymore. You have to deal with your own coaches. You have to set your own roadmap. And that can be a difficult mind shift from a person who has just uh, been taken care of all the time to immediately like, okay, now I have to take care of myself. What do I do? Right? That's, yeah, that I find uh, also with my clients, one of the things that they struggle the most is that even though I am their coach, at one point they have to be their own coach as well. Right. They, they have to uh, be self-motivated. I cannot be there at work with them every day. Okay, sometimes we get we hop on calls to unstuck them from a work situation, but that's that, that can happen only once or twice. Like they have to be self-motivated they have have to be, um, yeah. They, they, there is a different serving attitude, and more of a client supplier relationship rather than uh, we are in it all together type of relationship that you have in the employer employee. And is it hard at the beginning to find clients? Um, it is indeed. But actually, I would say that afterwards is harder to find clients than in the beginning. Because what happens in the beginning mostly is that people don't jump ship before finding clients. So you are working as an employee. And like I would say nearly all of my clients except one because one, of, one was really, really very determined. And he just stopped everything. and he said that he's going to become an independent and he cannot stand uh, the employer he had at the time. But all of my other clients have uh, jumped ship before that they have quit their job. So the first client is not, it's difficult to find, but it's not that difficult. The second, third, and the fourth is much more difficult because if you know a, uh, your contract is coming to an end, and you are not able to find a, another contract to follow it up back to back immediately, it has also a psychological strain on you, right? And you have to deal with that. But that difficulty, of course, is another difficulty than physically, like finding uh, your, your first client. You know immediately uh, what your skills are, and you have uh, the good part of a white color uh, contracting scheme is that internet offers really really a lot of possibilities and you can now do a market research immediately with the skills you have you can go online and see which uh, contract roles are available and uh, so you don't have to do all these old school type of writing a proposal going for tenders etc no you can just go and apply to a job it is like a job but in the end it's a contract so right. it is, it's not that different from getting a job in the very beginning. However, in the end, towards the end, when you are a more experienced consultant and you're a high ticket consultant, your 
client acquisition process gets more sophisticated as well because you are not charging those small fees anymore you are your most of your work is coming from the referrals and they are long time nourished relationships right like you uh, the things that we're taking normally a job application next week the interview and then the other week is done it used to be like that in the beginning but now you're a high ticket consultant it becomes like okay you know this person for years you have worked with a lot of colleagues of him etc and now he's starting a startup etc and he needs now a strategic direction and he calls you so would you call this uh, easy or not of course like it, it depends like okay. if you have uh, given enough thought to this kind of relationships and long time nurturing uh, mindset for your network that's that's just perfect and it will work very well for you yeah, but uh, in the in the beginning it's it's not really a lot of difference from an employee applying to a job that funny sound is back so i'm just noticing it um it must be because you're so far away <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to hear a little bit about your story, Siddhar. Um, I want to. I, I, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's coming from from me or from the network somehow. Like. Yeah, it, I I don't know if it'll show up, but it uh, every once in a while there's a loud click. So, um, apologies, listeners, if you're hearing the sound because uh, we're trying to fix it, but. Uh, it comes and goes, and it's also really stormy where I am right now, so it might be the weather outside. I don't know. Um, but tell us about your stories. Maybe, maybe I, can, I can try to change the room, um, and we can see if it's the environment I am in somehow. Um, let me, let me I don't know, another. unless it's... Unless it's uh... is, it, is it better now? I don't hear it Hello? Right now. I don't hear it now. All right. Okay. So That's I will. Good. I will do it in this bedroom. Sure. Um, yeah. So tell us a bit about your story. Yeah. Well, uh, my story is is not a, like a regular one that you would think of. Okay. You know, I was a geek when I was very small, and I become a technology consultant. Uh, I would love to have that kind of story, but uh, actually the first computer I have ever seen was when I was 17, when I started the college, because like we were poor. Uh, I'm coming from southeast of Turkey, from a war zone uh, country. And actually uh, a good accomplishment that I have was not just not to die. I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> in, the, in the middle of a war. So I was able to get out of it and I was able to study college. I, it was already putting me to the top 1% uh, and maybe even less, maybe one in a thousand. Uh, so I, I was very, very lucky in that sense, of course. But when you compare it with my uh, Turkish friends who had computers in their homes, who were able to code before that they would come, I remember the first computer science lesson the algorithm introduction to the algorithms and the the so he was asking a question the teacher was asking a question okay how are we going to move this chair from this room to the other room can you write an algorithm of it and this is just thought exercise it has nothing to do with the computers etc and for me it was like you know okay you take the computer you take the chair and you just put it there and that's it you know and all these people who have done programming and etc they were like yeah you know are do we have the power to carry it do we have the luck for the next room do we have the permission to put it there do uh, yeah are we are we going to put it in one go or can we rest in the process etc etc i was like oh I was like, how can you come up with all of all of these? You know, I was so foreign that I wouldn't even know after two or three years, I would embrace it very well and learn everything and make my, my road to uh, Microsoft. Actually, I became their academic writer in Turkey. And I work with them ever since. So I have been, uh, when I graduated, I have, uh, won a special award. I have uh, developed a 
a smart wheelchair for disabled uh, people. And with that, I won an award and uh, Microsoft uh, thankfully appreciated it and recruited me and we have worked together for some time and then they become my client as well. So uh, we have been working ever since. And uh, I, uh, but, but I wanted to be close to my family still, but I couldn't come to the country because I had a compulsory military service. So I couldn't go back to Turkey. I had to spend some more time uh, to avoid the compulsory military service. And I came to Ireland. So I came from Seattle to Ireland as a person who is very much used to a lot of stun for coming from Middle East, as you can imagine, was quite depressing. Mm. Uh, yeah, and and I worked about like two years in Ireland. And then one day my fr a friend of mine has said that, Sidar, we need a lot of uh, good technical people over here and we, we are short of them. Uh, would you... Would you be interested in coming and finding those highly technical people, contractors, etc.? And I said, sure, because I didn't know any better. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> if I knew if I knew how difficult it is, I would probably not do that. Like I, I thought that okay, you know, like somebody is doing it, Microsoft is doing it, and I can do that too, but. You know, you see how naive I am. Like I am thinking that I am at the same level as Microsoft with all the operations. I said, they're able to do it. I should be able to do that too, you know, <laughs> because, you know, I have these obstacles of uh, I'm not a European Union citizen. I need visa to do everything. I, I, have a, I don't have a right to set up a company in Belgium. So I had to set up a company in Ireland to do this business. And Ireland is not in Schengen. So all these type of, complications uh, so I had to learn the Irish law the Belgian law and in between and I was speaking no language of Belgium oh, right. uh, because French and Dutch mainly yeah? right. the yeah. uh, French Dutch and German I, I was speaking none of them and <laughs> that that was quite a humbling experience but I pulled it off and uh, then I yeah I became uh, I became as first as independent software architect and I hired some other people. And uh, during this process, I started to also coach people at my level or uh, the software engineers. So it started with that. But then I, as I grew, also the type of people that I was coaching have changed as well because I started to become a more uh, strategically oriented IT consultant. And then uh, some executives have been added to my circle. So, yeah, that's my story up to now. That's quite uh, it a story. Is, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it, it is not unfortunately a story that ends becoming a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. There's more important <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Like the, uh, the becoming an independent is not. Surprisingly, it's not going to make you a billionaire, you know. And uh, but as with the rates that I am talking about, if it makes you two days early, if you become independent, like you are already uh, paid all your costs in uh, in general, and then uh, yeah, like if you are making ten thousand dollars per month as an independent, you make it in ten days. That means that if you work in 20 days day you can take half of the year off if you right. would like to right? it gives you some so, freedom then yeah indeed and and to me that freedom is more important than becoming a billionaire what am i going to do for the with the rest of the money <laughs> exactly so if people want to know more about you sadar where can they find you um I have a Facebook group called Tech Leaders United. They can go to techleadersunited.com and uh, they are very, very welcome to join. Um, I, I'm also in all the social media. If they search for Sidar Ok, uh, they will be able to do that. And if they would like to uh, hear my 
opinions and my uh, my advices on both becoming an independent and the tech careers in general they can go to the iCoach blog uh, which is i q o a c h um, and that's about it i'm looking forward to connect with everybody fabulous and what's one last piece of advice for the careers by gen listener uh, focus on the value I mean, in the end, what we do is to provide a value for the world. And even if we are looking for more money, more compensation, more pleasure out of life, etc., everything is a fraction of it. We only capture a part of it. So if we can maximize the value that we provide in our career, in our relationship, and we, instead of hacking our way to get more of it or life hacks etc if we can focus on the value part then we will be able to capture more of it automatically so that would be my last advice great well thank you so much for the time that you've spent with us today and uh, i don't what time of night it is what, what time is it where you are uh it's currently seven o'clock here quite dark yeah seven o'clock at night yeah, seven o'clock yeah. at night, seven p.m. Yeah. So, sorry, and it's, yeah, it's and almost ten what? o'clock in the morning here. So, <laughs> <laughs> is it dark there too? No, <laughs> no, it's it, well, it's raining. So yes, it is dark, but it's not night ah. dark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you yeah. so much. You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.